Back in January at CES 2021, AMD revealed their new technology for their upcoming Ryzen CPUs, 3D vCache. And I gotta say, it's pretty impressive. Not only has AMD pioneered chiplet designs for consumers with their Zen 2 architecture, but now they're bringing it to consumers first, like us? That's sick. In any case, it looks like AMD has a lot more innovations in store for us. And this is what we're talking about today on your boot sequence. Now, 3D vCache, in case you didn't know, is essentially AMD taking their current Zen 3 chiplet architecture and stacking cache on top of it using TSVs or through silicon vias. That's the uh, connection method between the two. Think of it like soldering a chip, but at microscopic scale. Anyways, AMD has been working towards this for a while, since even the current Zen 3 chips have the TSV connection on there. With that though, AMD triples the L3 cache available on their chip, which when tested by AMD, brought a 12% FPS boost in Gears 5, just for adding the cache. That's pretty cool. So why am I talking about this, I mean, eight months ago? Well, during Hot Chips, AMD revealed some extra information on 3D stacking, and boy, does the future look great. AMD's future here shows what is possible. First, we got what they call die to die. An example of this is DRAM on a CPU. Technically, that's already been done by Intel with their Foveros technology on the Lakefield CPU. The whole CPU lives on one plane and then the DRAM is just stacked on top, but that didn't work out too well for Intel. Then we have CPU on CPU, basically stacking full CPUs on each other. Think first generation Threadripper and Epic CPUs, but instead of the chips being separate, they're all stacked on top of each other. Thermal management on this one would probably be insane. Then there's what they call IP on IP, so intellectual property on intellectual property. One example is core on core. So just like AMD is stacking L3 cache on L3 cache with core on core, well, they would do the same with the cores. That's great in theory, but once again, the main issue here is in the thermal management. Cores are what gets hot, so it could cause issues. Then there's core on uncore. The uncore is basically all the silicon that isn't in the core, but needs to be connected very closely to it to get high performance. In Intel CPUs, the uncore is basically everything but the cores and the cache. Things like the PCI Express controller, the memory controller, etc. That was IP on IP. Then there's macro on macro. This is taking smaller chunks of the CPU that can live alone and stacking them on top of each other. So part of the core could be stacked on other parts of the core, and it really is just about making each of those stackable parts smaller and smaller. Then there's IP splitting slash folding. Now this is interesting because AMD could possibly want to use multiple foundries. The problem is that if they let, let's say another foundry manufacture their Zen cores, that foundry might want to, you know, sell or copy the designs from AMD. IP splitting is essentially allowing another foundry to manufacture part of the CPU without them having enough information to go on to replicate AMD's intellectual property. So this is more about security than anything else. I just thought that was super interesting. And lastly, we got the big goal, circuit slicing. Essentially at this point, we're stacking parts of the chip. Different foundries are making different parts of the chip. And instead of having all of these chips connected on top of each other, we have the on top of each other and side by side, basically making sideways connections. And these connections could be from the same circuit, where the name is circuit slicing. Now you might think that Intel is already doing that. I mean, especially after seeing visually their Ponte Vecchio GPU with so many little chiplets so close together, but Ponte Vecchio is still just traditional chiplet design. They just took everything and crammed them next to each other. All of the connections are under every chip and they're basically just talking to each other. So going back to AMD, in the future, they wanna be able to slice and dice that chip to the smallest extent. But why would they wanna do that? Well, 
look at Ryzen. By separating the cores and the I.O., they got better yields. If they manufactured the whole CPU and the I.O. was bad, they would have to scrap the entire chip, including the cores. So with Zen 2, they built the I.O. separately, the I.O. die. If a chiplet was bad on an Epic processor, well, replace that chiplet instead of the whole thing. If an I.O. die is bad on a Ryzen CPU, well, once again, just throw it out and you still got the cores. You see what I mean? Now take this philosophy and translate it to smaller and smaller chunks of the CPU. It's pretty cool if you ask me. This would also allow them to manufacture these chunks at different process nodes. Three nanometers mixed with five nanometers with a hint of seven? Yes, please. So what are your thoughts on all this? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Leave a like if you liked it, two dislikes. If you didn't, you can click right here to learn more about why water is important for your CPU. And I'm not talking about water cooling. And right here to subscribe. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Hey. Miles Morales. It's not Miles. Spider-Man New York, I'm dumb. Why do we have a llama in the office? I don't know, it's useless, it's, no!